My name is DJ Mensa Ghanes on Touchable. I represent um, Aquaba Group Companies, Team Success. You already know. How many years have I been, been working with Sakuri? I think it's, it's nine years. I'm not quite sure. But I think it's between nine and ten years. Um, how did we meet? How did we meet? I remember I was coming from um, Akosomo. I had a show with Foresight TV in Akosomo. So on my way back, um, and then um, Costa Brown was part of the team, uh, so he, he called me and said that, oh, where are you? I need you to play for Sarko there. There's, uh, we had a conference center for a big concert, uh, I think um, December to remember. So he, he called me and said that, listen, our DJ didn't show up. Can you make it here? And I'm like, okay, fine. Um, I don't know, you know what time frame, but I'm on my way back to Accra. So as soon as I get to Accra, I'm coming straight away from the conference center because I had my gadget and all my laptop and everything in my car. So I just drove straight to conference center and then I'm like, okay, where's the playlist? Where's the songs? I had his songs already. I, I, was, I, I was the one that called him about his first album saying that, you know, you need to go back to the studio because the sound quality that came out wasn't that great. So I called Sarko and I called the producer, Jay So at that time as well. And I was like, you know what? I've listened to the CDs. The quality is so bad. I know that you guys have done like a good work in, in, in the studio, but what is coming out or what is on the CD is not the same as um, what I'm hearing. So you guys go back and, and check on it. So I used to talk to Sarkozy before I even met him backstage. So when I met him, I was like, okay, what are we doing? They gave me the playlist and then the arrangement. And I'll, you know, just when I was about to walk to him, to talk to him, to see how we're going to plan it and all, um, the director came out, you know, said, oh, we have five minutes to go on stage. You guys, you should come. Like, hurry up and come. So I was like, you know what? Follow my lead. I don't like the playlist that I saw, but I, I know the songs. So just go with my flow. And it was one of our best shows. Like, you know how we do it. Every time we go on stage, it's different. We never rehearse. So it was after the show that I heard that, oh, the DJ, he's been rehearsing with the DJ for about two weeks now. And the DJ decided not to show up. So he did, like, a, a mixed CD for them, you know, for him to go on stage and just give it to the DJ to slot him. So from there, he just felt it. We, we both felt it. I felt like, oh, at, at that time, I just ended um, um, playing um, for um, Prior. I used to play for Prior. So I wasn't working with them. I was on my own. And then I played for a few other artists before I met him. So just after that, you know, because I was like, you know what, I want you to play for South Korea. And like everywhere he goes, I want you to be his um, personal DJ. I'm like, as soon as the check is coming in, my money is coming. I don't have a problem, you know. I'm ready to work. So that is how we took off. And then since then, it's been, you know, one story from, you know, the other. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been very challenging, especially when, when I was on my own. I was DJ Mensa before even Sakode came out as an artist. You know, I was, I was there before hip life even started and all that. So, you know... I had, I was still doing clubs. I was still getting my private gigs. I, I was playing, I was still playing funerals, playing outdoors and weddings and all that. So, you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, some of the, the um, promoters also book late. You have a booking, and then you know um, you have another show with Sarko there. You know, this is where you make sacrifices. You wear both shows and go like, you know what? I'm going to let this one go. I'm going to disappoint this person or that person and that. You know. So at the point, I realized, okay. There were too many shows coming because we were always on the road. So it was very hard taking the wedding bookings, taking the club gigs, and even trying to do radio at the same time. Because almost every weekend that you have to be at the radio station, you're on the road. So I weighed both of it, like all of the chances that I had in this industry. And I decided to just be with him and just be on the road with him. It's been very challenging, but then it's been fun as well. I, I remember when I was coming up as a DJ, one thing that I said to myself that, even at, because I don't, I, I don't have, you know, I, I don't think I have what it takes to be on radio, if I should say that. I feel like I'm, I'm a bit reserved, you know, if you're on radio, you need to be more active and all that. I've done that, I've tried radio and all that. I'm, I'm a, a bit reserved guy. I'm the one behind the camera all the time trying to hide away from everybody. So, yes, I, I said to myself that I was coming up as a DJ. I'm not going to be on TV, I'm not going to be on radio, but I want to be as strong as, you know, all the DJs around the world. If my name is being mentioned, I want to be. I want people to shake their head like they they will, they will shake their head to any DJ coming from America or from Europe, you know. And how was I go? How was I? Will I be able to do that? 
it was it was it was difficult. I didn't even know at that time that I was praying for and asking God for for to, for, for him to make me a big DJ. I didn't even know what I, I was gonna it was gonna take me. I was praying to do big venues like the O2s, the Madison Square Gardens, all these big clubs. I was I was praying to just be there and do it. But working with Sarko there, I thought that I was gonna lose that. But I realized that he's rather being the one taking me on the road. He's rather taking me on the road. We are doing big arenas, we are doing clubs, you know, we are set, you know, Wembley, we, um, 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 recently, um, uh, what was it, what's the name, the, uh, the, the oh, what's the name of the club? Hamaistan, Hamaistan Ballroom, recently Hamaistan Ballroom, so, these are some, some of the venues, we, you know, we read about, or watch, um, big, big, big artists perform there, we are also doing it, so, and then comparing myself to the other DJs that are doing the radios and the, the clubs, I found, out, I, I found out that you're just locked up in a box. You know, it's very hard for you to even get a chance for your, for your company to support you to go out there for like a week or a month to say that you're going to do a tour outside Ghana. So again, even though it's challenging, I'm very happy I'm on the road with Sarko here and doing, you know, and achieving the, the purpose of, of me being around as a DJ. Definitely, definitely. I don't, I don't, I don't see. You know, I, I always say to people that working with Sarko there is always more like a march in heaven, because this is when I don't know if you've seen our performance. It's unique. It's, it's different from you know. There, are, there are so many artists with, with their own personal DJs, but it's not the same as us. We are different. So then again, you know, even though you know you get other proposals from other people, you know. You know, other, you know, juicy, juicy deals from other people. You still think about, you know, where you've come from and where you're going and all that. You know, working with Sarko there has stopped me a lot. And I don't think that I'm even ready to think about working with another artist right now, if you ask me. Yeah. Well, I've, 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 as I said from the beginning, I've been around um, since um, uh, Mache album. You know, I've gone through Mache to um, Rapaholic to um, Psychology to Mary and now the Highest. Um, highest album, um, if you ask me, you know, Sakodi and I are always, you know, exchanging because I'm I'm coming from, I'm I'm coming from the club scene, so I'm into commercial music. If you ask me, you know, what I want to listen to from Sakodi, he always tell you that oh, leave Mensa alone. He's not into hip hop. But it's not like I'm not into hip hop. Um, there's one thing that I've learned that um, I have studied in the industry, especially when it comes to like Afrobeat. I believe that if you have a commercial music that is banging, it's not even the lyrics, it's not even the content. It's if you if you can make African um, Africans like dance, you're going to travel around the world, you know, with with just one song, you know. So we we, we do go back and forth. If you ask me, 